Are we on? We're on. Hey guys. I'll say hey, hey. Hey, hey, are we up and going? Are, you can see me, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, Sheen. Hey, Kyle. Landon. All right. Does it look, does it look fine? You can hear me fine. Hey, Chad. Hey, Jennifer Rose. Hey, Pastor Nate. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking down at everyone coming on. Hey, Sherry. Twyla. Carol. Keith. Stacy. Look at our church family. Hey, Heather. So, good to see you. Good to see everyone. Hey, Miss Carol. Hey, Jake. Jenna Smith. Stephanie. Miranda. Hey. All right. So, everyone is saying hey. So, I am going to take it that you, that you guys can hear me. That you can hear me all right. And we're not blurry or anything. <laughs> I'm excited too. Hi, Miss Louise. Hey, Keith. Hey, Miss Holly. Oh, love the hearts. Love, love, love the hearts. <laughs> All right, hey, we're going to take just a few minutes. We've got a couple of minutes here while people are uh, popping on. I'm kind of looking. Hey, Amanda. Uh, from the back deck. That's a good place to be, Jake. Hey, Ashley. High five, Chad. Thanks, man. Thank you, Miranda. Hey, Tony, Antoinette, Lisa Green, Miss Reese. Yeah, I'm trying to say hey to everyone. Hey, Heather and Kevin. Good to see you guys on here. April. I know. I'm just, I want to say hi to everybody. Man, it's good to see you. Thank you, Tony. Love you. <laughs> Loud and clear. Good, good, good. Crystal clear feed and sounds great. Okay, man, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to hear. Hey, we've got just one more minute um, while people are jumping on. Someone, someone, tell me something good. Write a comment in there. What's God saying to you? Good to see you, Miss Janice. Love you, Chad. Wow, we are at seven seven o'clock already. We were wanting to. Um, Kill music. Yeah. So how can y'all hear the music in the background? Hey, Josh Cooper, Jim and Beata. <laughs> Man, it's good to be good to be with our church family. Said we wanted to create a little bit of lobby time, you know, when we when we get together and uh, visit and fellowship. I am picturing in my head Clarissa and Jack and Michelle and Sarah and all you amazing Awaken Cafe folks. That um, I actually have a jar of water here, but I am pretending that it is an amazing drink from our cafe. <laughs> yeah. Golly, and it's already 7.01. Man, that went fast. We wanted to get on and do some do some little chatting. Someone tell me how your week has been. <laughs> New comment. Come on. Make sure the music stays low. Go kill the music, Philip. All right. The music has been killed, and I'm going to get off the feed here, and we are just going to get in into uh, Discipleship Wednesday. So welcome. If you're just now jumping on, um, this is Discipleship Wednesday Beyond Church, and we're coming live to you, actually, from our dining room tonight, and uh, it's good to have you. 
It's good, uh, good to be with my church family, and although my eyes can't physically see you right now, believe me, the eyes of my heart, I'm picturing every, every single one of you. And uh, I just hope that you take this time, you guys, and as we are looking in God's Word, and I'll just tell you, we're going to look at several scriptures tonight, and uh, I'm going to try really hard not to be long-winded, but you guys know me. And so I am just asking you to, to believe with me for uh, the, the, just the right utterance and uh, that his words and his declarations will be, will be made tonight that we fellowship around his, his word, his life-giving word. Um, and so other than Psalms 91, we are going to wrap up with it and we'll probably do that uh, towards the end. Uh, because there's just a few things that I want to share uh, to start with, and then we will we'll wrap up with with Psalms 91. Wow, a power packed psalm, power packed with promises that our that our Father has given us. So um, let's just jump right in. What do you think? Uh, like I said, there's nine other passages of Scripture, and we'll just see where we go. But let's pray together, all right? Y'all believe with me. Believe with me. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just, we all come to you right now just with reverence and with honor before your throne. We thank you, Lord, that your word is life to us. It is life to us. It lights our path. It shows us the way to go. It's health and medicine to all of our flesh. It's alive to us. So we thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you that by your spirit, your word is anointed and it comes alive in our hearts, uh, permeating and bringing life to every single area of our lives tonight. And we just, we agree with this. We come into agreement and we all just say, amen. Amen. I heard you say it. All right. So, hey, I wanted to start off uh, really quick here. Since the first of the year, this is something that uh, we have been doing as a staff. And so what we do is we go into this document and we write down uh, nuggets, uh, things that the Lord uh, is saying to, uh, to us. And I'm telling you guys, it is rich. Let me make a plug right now. I encourage you to go back. Uh, you can go on YouTube. You can go on Facebook. Um, but go back and listen to the messages, January the 12th and January the 26th. And this is when Pastor Nate started his, there is a fly here and me and him are about to go at it. Sorry, yes, I have my fly swat here. How often does that happen in, in church? But anyway, go back and listen to uh, the message January the 12th and January the 26th. I'm gonna read just a few nuggets of what the Lord has said to us. And uh, how many of you know when the Lord, when the Lord brings words to us, it is because we need them, right? It, it's because He's already bringing light. He's already bringing life for things that we'll be uh, facing, things that are coming up. But His His desire and His reason for bringing us His word is to always. Uh, make a path and make a way of life for us, you know? And so let me just read a few of these to you, okay? This is from January uh, the 12th. In order to remain firm and unshaken to the end, I must have the word and the word spoken through others. By faith today, by faith I can. The love of God is not helpless. And I'm not even reading all of the nuggets that were written down, okay? Uh, God calls unbelief evil. When God says something and I choose not to believe it or I choose something else, it's evil. The Bible calls it evil. Apart from hearing the word of God, there is no faith. The substance of faith has been entrusted to me. I have something to give. Um, Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. What is forming at God's command through me? 
what is forming at God's command through you. When the Lord brings something to you and you don't do it, you're saying, I know better. And you are allowing your heart to be calloused. All right, I'm going to read a few more. This Again, this is just from January the 12th. I have the substance I need for victory and for obedience if I'm hearing the word of God. Amen. If I have, I have the substance uh, that I need for victory if I'm hearing the word of God. If I hear the word, uh, Hebrews 4, 2, the gospel is a delivering gospel. How many of y'all remember Pastor uh, Nate saying this in this message? The gospel is a delivering gospel. Good news. Deliverance from bondage. A way out. And then my love of people should become greater than my fear of them. So those are just a few of the nuggets from, from that one message. And I want to read just a few more from the 26th. Satan becomes most powerful when he gets a believer's mouth. Satan becomes most powerful when he gets a believer's mouth. Wow. Now, is this not relevant or what? Uh, the process of prayer is foiled when I pray from an offended heart. The process of prayer is foiled when I pray from a, an offended heart. So, you know, we can be offended at God. We can be offended at others. And when we are in a state of offense, the, uh, our prayer life, it's hindered. The Bible tells us that. Um, here's another nugget. My tongue is the leash for my mind. Come on now. My tongue is the leash for my mind. We talked about this last week. How do we pull in thoughts that are contrary to truth, contrary to what God says by opening, I, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, contrary to what God says by opening our mouth and let the words of our mouth interrupt that thought, reel that thought in, bring it in to the obedience of Christ, say what the Bible says, say what God has said. All right. When I get busy, it's easy for me to play the blame game. So let's just look. Let, let's remember that when, I'm, when I get busy and I'm about doing what I need to do and I'm attending to everything uh, and kind of putting my time with the Lord on, on the back burner because there's so many voices out there that, that's hollering for my attention, uh, then it's, it's real easy for when things in my life aren't going right that I am going to find someone to blame. All right. Offense is so dangerous because it makes sense. Whomever I am receiving information from, I am surrendering to. Whomever I am receiving information from, Wherever I'm getting information from, I am surrendering to that. Wow, guys, I mean, we're not even into the message yet, and that right there is, is just a mic drop. Um, what, what are we giving our attention to? What, what, what? <laughs> How many times can I say what? Um, what's going in? Our ears what is set before our eyes more than any anything else and whatever wherever my focus is is where my mind is going to go and where my mind goes is where my mouth is going to go and where my mouth goes is where my life is going to go so it's vitally important who we are giving our attention to um, all the voices, the fan noise. Y'all remember uh, Pastor talking about this, the, the fans in the stands who are, and you know, and he talked about being on our uh, home field advantage and how loud it can be, you know, how loud it can be uh, when you're on your own uh, uh, home court or your home field. Uh, but also when you go away and you play somewhere else uh, and you're on someone else's turf, and the fan noise is great, and it's coming in, and, and what's it trying to do? It's trying to cause us to make the wrong call. All of the voices, all of the voices that are around right now, what is that meant to do? It's meant to cause us to make 
the wrong call. It's our choice. It is our choice. God said, I set before you uh, life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. He said, hey, choose life. We're the ones that make the call. We are the ones that make the call in our lives. And then here's the last nugget. Uh, Satan is always after our agreement in the body. Always. He's always trying to come in and, and to divide off the body from one another. Uh, I mean, you, you think about think about all of this all of this crud that is going on. Even trying to trying to come in and make a way to separate and and to divide off when there is separation. There's no agreement. When there's no agreement, there is no power. And uh, when there's no power, there's no advancement in the kingdom. I mean, we know that Psalms uh, one. 33, I think it is, where it talks about where there is unity, where there is unity among the brethren. Uh, the Bible tells us that there, in that place, God commands his blessing. So, uh, so we're pretty, um, we're, we're pretty uh, active, and we are on guard, and we are aggressive about guarding the preciousness of the unity of uh, in our body, the people that he has uh, connected us with. Amen? All right. Uh, so again, those were just some nuggets from those, two, um, from those two services. I do encourage you to get them out, to listen to them, to feed on them again, uh, because they were words right to us, and uh, they're words that will help us fight, you know, fight the good fight of faith. All right. So get your Bibles out. I hope you have your Bibles um, and, and something, to, something to write on a device or whatever it is. And we're going to go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. I encourage you, seriously, get your word out. When, we are, when we're doing a Bible study, when we're in Discipleship Wednesday, when we are at church on Sunday, whenever it is that we are gathering around the word for fellowship, Get your own eyes on your word. Get your eyes on the page so that you can see what God is saying to you. All right? All right. So Hebrews 4.2 in the Amplified. And again, this is another scripture that uh, Pastor Nate referenced, I think, pretty recently uh, in a service. All right. It said, For indeed we have had the glad tidings of the gospel... Proclaim to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. Uh, it was not mixed with faith by those who heard it. Now, in the Amplified, it also says, Neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. So it is possible to hear the good news. It is possible to hear uh, what God is saying. Good news, good news of deliverance. We just read that while ago. It's possible for us to hear that and it not benefit us at all. Why? Because we did not mix faith with it. Um, just as the Israelites, just as the Israelites did. But I found it pretty interesting that in this verse in the Amplified that it says, uh, and also because the Israelites didn't join, how did, how did it read? Did, they were not united in faith with the ones uh, who heard and did believe. How important it is the... Uh, the company that we're called to, the company that we are called to uh, who are also living by faith. It matters. It matters who we're hanging out with. It matters the company that we are called to, that God's called us to. And we want to be, we want to be the ones that's talking faith and, and believing in God, that he is who he said he is. He's as big as he is, that he keeps his word, that he's faithful. We want to be that to one another uh, in, in our company, right? And we do have an amazing company who, uh, who believe uh, that God is who he said he is. Hey, let's turn to Numbers 13. 
And we're gonna look at the Israelites here for just a second. See what we can learn. Numbers 13. This is the account of the 12 spies going into the land. Going into the land, God had brought them out uh, of Egyptian bondage. You know, the miracles, miracle upon miracle upon miracle. Uh, and, and he said, I'm bringing, I'm bringing you out of bondage. You're going to be passing through the wilderness. You know, that place of not bondage, but just, just enough. He said, but the place that I have prepared for you is the promised land that's flowing with milk and honey, the promised land that has uh, uh, the grapes. The grapes are, are humongous. It is, uh, it's excessive. The promised land, it's excessive. He said, this is the place that I'm, that I'm bringing you to. So they send the 12 spies in. Let's go to um, verse 23. Um and they came to the valley, they cut down there from a branch, one cluster of grapes, and they had to carry it on a pole uh, between two of them. Wow, that is some big grapes, right? Um, verse 27, they told Moses, we came to the land to which you sent us. Surely it flows with milk and honey, and, and this is the fruit. And you know, and I put in my Bible, I said, this shouldn't be a surprise, God told them. God told them this is what the land looked like. And then verse 28 says, But the people who dwell there are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, there we saw the sons of Anak. Verse 29, uh, Amalek dwells in the land of the south, the Hittite, the Jebusite, the Amorites, uh, on the hill countryside, the Canaanite dwells by the sea. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to stop right here and I'm going to tell you for every promise of God. Uh, in Second Peter, it tells us that he has given us precious, great and precious promises. Great and precious promises. His Bible are full of them. And, and uh, in our journey, whatever our promised land looks like, whatever the promise is that we're holding to, let me assure you, we are in a fight we are in this world, and we are in a fight of faith. And any promise that you're looking at in God's Word, there are a lot of ites there. There are ites. There are enemies. There are voices. There are things that we see with our eyes that look contrary to what God has promised us. There's things that we hear with our ears that makes it look contrary to what the promise is. Let's keep going. Verse 30. Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let's go up at once and possess it. We are well able to conquer it. I say that to you today. You're well able. You're well able to conquer anything that you're facing. We, as God's people in this earth, we are well able to conquer uh, what we are facing in the earth right now. We're well able. God has said we are. I'm not even partway in my message. I'm going to try to not holler and preach here, okay? Um, but his fellow scouts, this is verse 31. I ain't going to catch that fly. We're not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than we are. Um, so they brought the Israelites an evil report of the land, which they had scouted out, saying, The land through which we went to spy is a land that devours its ha inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Verse 33, there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, who came from the giants. And we were in our own sight as gra uh, grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. It makes me laugh. Every single time I read this in uh, verse 33, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Well, that in itself is an issue because if I'm seeing myself as a grasshopper, if I'm seeing myself as defeated, if I am seeing myself as down under, um, then that, that is a problem. And what should that be telling me? That is telling me that I have not been looking at myself in the mirror of God's word because God tells a whole different story at who I really am and who you really are. All right? And, but the last part, it said, and so were we in their sight. So they came out, 
They saw the difficulties in the land. They saw the giants in the land. They saw the economy uh, being threatened. They saw the coronavirus. Uh, they saw all that was going on and they came back and they said, there are giants in these land and we look like grasshoppers, not only in our eyes, but in their eyes. And you know, the truth of it is, um, let's go to, let me, let me show you this. Um, oh, show me Lord, uh, Joshua, go to Joshua two, really, really quick here. Joshua 2. So this is after the unbelieving generation of the Israelites died out for those 40 years. Moses had died. That generation had died. Uh, it had been handed over to Joshua to lead the people uh, into the promised land. Uh, verse chapter 2 of Joshua. And they send two spies in. And you remember that they go in to spy and they go to Rahab's house. And Rahab... Uh, hides them, hides the two spies of Israel. All right, so here we are. And um, in ver chapter 2 and verse 9, she says, And she said to the men, Rahab said to the two Israelite spies, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Uh, this is crazy. So all of this time, all of these 40 years, the people over here have been, they heard about Israel's God. They heard about all of the miracles. They heard about um, how God fought for his people and all of the great deliverances. So in actuality, when, when the spies came back and they said, and we were grasshoppers in their sight, a, a lie in the pit of hell. They were shaken in their boots because they had heard of the God of Israel and all that God had done for them and, and, and fought for them. And the truth is, as the church of the living God, we, we should not feel like grasshoppers and we shouldn't be saying to the coronavirus or to anything else that, uh, that, that we're scared of it because in actuality, the spirit that is behind every evil thing in the earth is afraid of us. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of the church of the living God actually standing up in their seat and place of authority and dominion and taking authority over them. They've heard of our God. Amen. Say amen, Philip. Amen. <laughs> uh, let's see. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt uh, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites and how they were utterly destroyed. When we heard it, our hearts melted. Neither did spirit or courage remain any more in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. So um, I think we should keep that keep that in mind. We're not grasshoppers, and we are not grasshoppers in the enemy's eyes. He fears us. He fears you, the body of Christ. Amen. Yeah. All right. So let's turn to Romans four. I want to look, we're just looking at some scriptures here uh, to get some, um, you know, to get some fight in us, to get some um, where we are functioning and operating. And I'm not saying we haven't been, I'm not saying that you haven't been, uh, but it's good to encourage ourselves in what God says. All right, Romans 4 and 17. So we're talking about faith here. What, this is a great faith uh, chapter. Romans 4, 17. It says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they are. So here we see, here we see God. He is a faith God. He is a faith God. He always has been and he always will be. He calls those things that be not as though they are. 
All right, so in verse 18, I just want to keep reading a few more scriptures because these are good. Who against hope, we're talking about Abraham here. This is who uh, uh, chapter 4 is talking about. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now we know that God gave Abraham the promise of uh, being uh, a father. And not only a father, but a father with many, 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 many descendants. Now, he, here, you know, he's approaching 100 years old, and he and Sarah have not had a child. All right? So, it says in verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. How, how did he remain in a place that his uh, faith was not weak? Because he considered not what his body looked like. He considered not the, uh, the um, contrariness to what God had promised. What was going on in his body. It looked like the furthest thing from what the promise said that he could have. But it says he was not weak in faith because he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Amen. Man, those are such good scriptures. Staggering not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he remained strong in faith, giving glory to God. And, uh, you know, it said belief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. You know what? We are the ones that get to choose what we believe. What we believe is a choice of our will. What we, It doesn't have to make sense to us to believe. We just have to make the determination that God's word to us is truth. There is no truth apart from God's word. And whether we understand it or not, we make the decision that God, I choose to believe you. We choose what we believe. Whether I understand all of it or not, thank God. Thank God that I don't have to understand to believe. You know? I don't understand. You've heard this illustration. I don't understand how that car out there, how I can get in it and, and turn it, that key and, and put it uh, in gear and, and go places in it. I don't know all of the workings of the engine. Uh, I don't know all the workings of an airplane when I get on it, but I believe, I believe that when I get in it, it's going to do what it was made to do and it's going to get me uh, to where I'm going. And um, so we believe. We're believers. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Amen. All right. So, faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Uh, in Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 1, 1 and 3, I know you know what, what this says, but we're going to read it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what a picture. Uh, the earth was without form, it was void, and there was darkness upon the face of the, uh, uh, the earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering. And God said, God stepped up and he said, Wow, it is dark outside. Look, just look at how dark it is. Man, it's dark. Wow, wow, that is a lot of darkness out there. Wow, it's dark. Did God say that? No, we know that's not what he said. He didn't step out into eternity and look over the dark earth and declare what it was. He declared what he wanted it to be. He said, light be. 
He didn't talk about what it was. He called those things that be not as though they were. And so he unleashed out of him, uh, out, out of his heart, what's on the inside of him, he unleashed it by the words of his mouth by saying, light be. And we know that light was. Amen? And so, uh, obviously, the same is very true for us. We are made in the image of God. And I heard Charles Capp say this, if we don't want the, um, if we want the cat, then quit calling the dog. If we want healing, if we want uh, deliverance, if we want uh, this coronavirus to bow its knee, if we want the economy to be boosted, if we want uh, Americans, if we want people to come to know the Lord, if we want to know, if we want our uh, people uh, back in their jobs and our economy booming, then we've got to quit calling what we're seeing with our natural eyes. We've got to quit talking about it. Call those things that be not as though they were. If you want the cat, quit calling the dog. Amen. It's good preaching. I don't care who you are. All right. The spirit of faith speaks, 2 Corinthians 4.13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We believe and therefore we speak. All right, so I want you to turn to Ephesians 1. I know this is a scripture that we look at uh, a lot, you guys. Um, but I want, us, I want us to look at it again. All right, Ephesians 1, and we're going to go to verse 17. Our perspective changes everything. So when we speak, when we pray, what is our expected? What do we see and how are we seeing it? All right, Ephesians 1 and verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, it says, I, do, I don't cease to give thanks for you. And this is what I'm praying for you, the Apostle Paul is writing. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his, is, <laughs> the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, say, I believe, I believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also uh, in that which is to come. So God raised Jesus from the dead. He sat him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. We say this uh, a lot in church circles, but Jesus is the name that is above every single name. So whatever it is that you're facing, declare Jesus. Declare Jesus over it. Everything has a name. Cancer is a name. Diabetes is a name. Lack is a name. Coronavirus is a name. We declare the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We declare that name. Amen. And he's put all things under his feet, verse 22, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now let's skip down to chapter 2 of Ephesians and uh, let's read verse 6. No, nope, let's go back to verse 5. Even when we were dead in our sins, God has quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. And he's raised us up together, and he's made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, it says that he put all things under Jesus' feet. 
And we are the body of Christ. Where, where are your feet? Are they coming out of your head or are they on your body? Yeah, they're on the end of your legs there. Our, our feet do not come out of the head. We are the body of Christ in the earth. And God said when he raised Jesus from the dead that he raised us with him and he seated us with him in the heavenly places. That's verse 6, Ephesians chapter 2, in Christ Jesus. And you go back up in Ephesians 1 and you read, all right, we are seated in Christ. That is where we are. And we are far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. So when we know that we are seated in the heavenly sphere in Christ Jesus, when we know this, then we, our perspective is way different. Then we're, we are looking down from a place of victory and we're not fighting, we're not fighting to obtain victory. We are fighting from victory, from way up here, seated in Christ, looking down. So we're not down here looking up and trying to fight for victory, but we as God's people are seated far above in Christ, fighting uh, from victory. Wow, it makes a difference. The, the, our perspective of everything changes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, wow. We are just cooking right along here. Um, fear not. I, wa I want us to look at this. John 14, 1. Hey, are you getting anything out of it? Give me a thumbs up if you are. John, not that I can see it, but... And I hope you're interacting there. John 14, 1. We're going to talk about fear for just a moment here. It says, in the Amplified, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. Uh, John 14, 1. In the uh, King James, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. So I wrote in my Bible here, I've got it highlighted, underlined, and up above it, I wrote, and I don't even know when I wrote this. It's been here for a while. But it said, I wrote, this is a command. Therefore, circumstances don't dictate the obedience of this. My will does. My will does. Do not let your hearts be troubled. So it's not, it's a command. It isn't a suggestion. And he, he told us, don't let your heart be troubled. Again, I, I said this in, uh, in prayer uh, a couple of days ago, that fear can be all around us, but that doesn't mean that fear has to be in us. That's good news. <laughs> that is very good news. Uh, we have the ability to say, I will not fear. I'm going to obey. I'm going to obey this instruction from the Lord uh, that tells me, do not fear. Fear not. Do not be afraid. And you say, well, my gosh, Mona, I can't help it. Look at all of the things that's going on in the world. How can I not be afraid? Yeah, listen to what you just said. Look at what's going on. Yeah, if we look at what's going on, and that's where our focus in is, then we open the door to the spirit of fear to come right in into fellowship with us. That's right. And so we don't look at that. We look at what God says and we stand up and we say, I will not fear. Amen. Uh, let's go to Psalms 34. I want to read just a, a few scriptures here in Psalms uh, 34. And then also if you want to go to 2 Kings 6. And we are going to be wrapping up pretty quick. So, Psalms 34 and then 2 Kings 6. Sorry guys, trying to get to 2 Kings here. All right. Psalms 34 and 2 Kings 6. So there are some um, amazing promises 
in Psalms 34 and regarding deliverance and, and regarding fear. Uh, Psalms 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Wow, that's good news. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. They that seek the Lord shall not want or lack any good thing. That's good news. Do you, do you need something? Is there something in your life that you need? The Bible tells us that when we seek him, we'll not want or will not lack for any good thing. Is provision a good thing? Yes, it is. Is protection a good thing? Yes, it is. Is having food on the table for my kids a good thing? Yes, it is. Is healing in my body a good thing? Is peace in my marriage a good thing? Are healthy relationships a good thing? Yes, they are. And the promise here in God's word is when we seek him, we shall not lack any good thing. Glory to God. Uh, verse 15, this is Psalms 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The Lord, his ears are always open to the righteous. He hears you when you call upon him. Um, verse, uh, let's read verse 19. It's, well, no, let's read verse 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their distress and troubles. <laughs> Glory to God. And then verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh, but, man, there's a ginormous but right there. But the Lord delivers him out of them, someone say it, all. <laughs> but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Glory to God. I love that so much. So many, so many precious promises in Psalms 34. Um, in 2 Kings 6, this is another one that we actually shared uh, in prayer the other day. Um, but it is about when uh, Elisha, Elisha and his servant, um, the Syrian army was coming down upon them. Um, in fact, in verse 14, 2 Kings 6, verse 14, so the Syrian king sent through, uh, their horses, chariots, and a great army. They came by night and surrounded the city. Uh, when the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. And Elisha's servant said to him, Alas, master, what shall we do? So Elisha's his servant got up, he looked out and surrounded. They were surrounded by the enemy army. They were surrounded by bad news. They were surrounded uh, by talks of the coronavirus. They were, they were surrounded uh, by talks of a failing economy. Uh, they, were, they were surrounded by talk of lack of provision and, and no way out and everyone is about to go under. They were surrounded by it. And Elisha prayed and he said, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Um, I'm so sorry. Verse 16, I skipped verse 16. Elisha answered him first and said, fear not. There's that command again. Fear not, don't be afraid, for those with us are more than those that be with them. <laughs> Lord, open our eyes. Open the eyes, Lord, our, the eyes of your people that we could see that there are more that be with us than those that be with them. Amen. There's more. There, there, angel armies are surrounding us. They're on our side. They're fighting for us. They're fighting with us. Amen. All right. So um, earlier this week when I, I was just fellowshipping with the Lord and just asking him, all right, Lord, what are you saying? And this is the word of the Lord that came to me. And uh, he said, explosions of my goodness. 
explosions of my goodness. You know what? God is excessive and his goodness is overwhelming. And it is time, wow, it is just time for us to get the word of the Lord in our mouths, getting, uh, get in our place of authority and dominion, call those things that be not as though they were, and declaring excessive explosions of God's goodness in your life, in your family's lives, in our church, uh, in our city, in our state, in our nation, explosions of the goodness of God. You know, the Bible tells us it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. It's the goodness of God. God's intent, uh, you know, first of all, no evil is from God. No evil, no calamity is from God. But, but he doesn't use the enemy's tactics to scare the hell out of people. That, that's not the way God works. God uh, is good. And his goodness is what overwhelms people. His love for you is what overwhelms uh, our hearts and draws us to him. Explosions of his goodness. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to read this in Luke 2, uh, 10. And then we, re we really are uh, about to close, you guys. But it, it, you remember when Jesus, when the angels appeared to, uh, when the angels appeared to the shepherds uh, about the birth of Jesus. You know, they were out in their fields, and the angels uh, appeared to appeared to them. And uh, yeah, I just I want to read it. So Luke two. Luke 2 and 10. The angel said to them, Fear not. Here again, here's a command. Fear not. For behold, fear not. Look at this. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. Do you know that that is still the message today? Christ is still in the earth today. Why is that? Because his body's here. Because you are here. The news for people in the earth is good news. Good news of peace. Goodwill toward men. Wow, that's good news. And we are the ones. We are the carriers of this peace. We are the carriers of the light. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. You know, let's turn to Psalms 91 and then we're going to close and we're going to pray. But you remember over the door of our church what it says. Our expectation is an invitation for God to move. What have you been expecting? What have you been expecting? I can guarantee you, you've been expecting what you've been looking at. You've been expecting what you've been hearing. And I believe there is, uh, I think there's a coming up here. There's a, there's a coming up for, for all of us. Uh, coming up for all of us in, um, in what we're expecting. God's goodness. That we expect God's goodness not only in our lives, but we are expecting and prophesying uh, the goodness of God into our cities, into our communities, into our hospitals. You know, in, in, instead of saying what the news is feeding us about how many more cases, how many more cases, and this is going to last all in past the summer months. And I don't know, I think that's what I heard at some point, some of these things, and, and that our, our hospitals... Uh, just don't have enough supplies and and uh, it, it's going to take so many more weeks for there to be a, a vaccine and well why don't we put the word in our mouth prophesy declare by faith those that those things that be not as though they were 
uh, declare the goodness of God and the excessiveness of God and start saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there are an excessive amount of supplies showing up at hospitals and medical facilities to do all that they need to do. Thank you, Lord, that there's an excessive amount of wisdom given to our researchers and our scientists and, and that a vaccine or, or, or the help uh, comes a, a lot faster than what they're saying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that there is an excessive uh, amount of shift in, in the economy, that there are not less jobs, but there are more jobs, that the people uh, in our country, um, the people in our country flourish, that we're not going backwards, that we're not going into recession. The goodness of God, the goodness of God, the goodness of God leads men to repentance. Eyes need to be lifted. Eyes need to be lifted up so that they can see where their help comes from. Glory to God. All right, let's read Psalms 91, and we're going to close with this. Uh, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. All right? I'm being loud. Amplified, because it'll be loud. Oh, Philip said it's going to be loud since I'm reading it out of the Amplified. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. And if he's the most high, that means there's nothing or no one higher. And we just read that we're seated with him. I will say of the Lord, man, we spent a lot of time on this last week. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. He's my fortress, my God. I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. I will say of the Lord, Lord, you're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my blesser. You're my provider. You're my peace. You're my joy. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions, his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Our confidence is in his faithfulness. Our confidence is not in what, how great we believe or what we've done or not done. Our confidence is in his faithfulness. Amen. So you shall not be afraid of the terror of night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots, and the slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be, yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as you witness the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place. There, there in that place. What place? That place where I've made the Lord my refuge, my dwelling place. There shall no evil befall me, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. I'm sorry. I know I go back and forth between first person and, and uh second or third person there, but I say these, I declare these over my family a lot because of the blood of Jesus, because of his redemptive work, because I belong to him. I am hidden in him and there shall no evil, no calamity, no pestilence, no destruction come near our dwelling. Glory to God. Glory to God. For he gives his angels charge over us to accompany and, and uh, defend us. They shall bear us up on their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the serpent. Shall we trample under foot? They're under our feet. Because, the Lord saying, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows my name. And I will never forsake him. No, never. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. With long life, Lord, you satisfy me. 
and you show me your salvation. Amazing promises in Psalms 91 for our families. Man, get it in your mouth. Uh, say it, mutter it, so it drops so deeply into your heart that when it comes back up out of your heart and in and out of your mouth, that it's coming out with conviction. It's coming out with absolute belief that this is who my God is and this is how it will be in our house. Amen? All right. So let's pray. Uh, I'm so thankful that you guys joined us for uh, Discipleship Wednesday uh, tonight. Those of you from beyond church and, and beyond, uh, seriously good uh, to have you with us. And, and I just want to say this. Uh, if there's any of you out there that are watching and uh, you honestly, you honestly do not know this God that we've been talking about tonight. You don't know that if uh, something happened today, uh, and, and your life on earth was over where you would spend eternity. If, if you would go to heaven and spend eternity with the Lord or, or if you would go to hell. But let me tell you, you can know tonight. <laughs> you can know with absolute assurance that heaven is your home. You have a God that loves you. And the Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is call upon his name. Romans tells us that if we, what we believe in our heart and that we confess with our mouth, we believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross, he made a payment for our sins that we could not, uh, that we could not pay. And that if we, if we believe that and we confess him with our mouth as our Lord, then we shall be saved. Glory to God. Glory to God. That is good news. So if that's you tonight and you don't know, uh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray and, and believe. And you can know tonight that, that God is your father and that heaven is your home. And there is another, there's another promise in God's word. In Acts, it it's a promise to us that says you and your household shall be saved. That is, shall be saved. And, and you know, salvation is not, it's not only uh, salvation from our sins and, and so that we enter eternity into heaven with the Lord. It certainly includes that, but salvation is being saved from all of, of the curse and what sin uh, the curse has produced uh, in, in our lives. Salvation. What do we need to be saved from? We need to be saved from a whole lot of things, uh, right? And, and so we can, we can stand, on, stand on that and, and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that me and my household shall be saved. And we don't go by what it looks like. We go by what God has promised us. So let's pray right now. And uh, if, if that's you, and if, you, uh, if you're calling on the Lord for the first time, uh, we're very, very excited for you. But, so, but we just pray, just repeat after me. God, I come to you right now, and I see my need for a Savior. I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of my sins. I acknowledge them. I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Come in, wash me white as snow. Cleanse me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I call you my Lord. I call you my Savior. I call you my Lord. Thank you that heaven is my home and that you are my Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer tonight, heaven is your home and God is your father. And everything that we talked about, every the goodness of God, I pray that the goodness of God overwhelms you and your family. In Jesus' name. All right, guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. And we will see you on Sunday. Pastor Nate will be bringing uh, another timely
on time message. Love you guys.